Welcome back to Spirit Square. I'm Andrew Darrington, your host. We're here for episode 12. Josh, we've made 12 episodes and we're here at the Beckham Hotel here in the Cigar Lounge. They afforded us a space. We thank them so much for doing that. And we have great news. We have the new sponsor, Red Construction, has sponsored us. We're so thankful for them to do that. And we'll mention them during, the, uh, during all of our podcasts going forward. As well as their sponsor for us, we really appreciate them for doing that. We have a great guest tonight, someone that's local and a distill representing a distillery that's local. I'm kind of showing off their hat, their Tala Kara hat. Uh, a distillery out of Alistair, Trent Porch is on with us. He is their bar manager, which is our favorite person in any bar, our, especially if you're in the distillery. And so, we're going to talk a little bit about the distillery, but thanks so much for coming on, especially in this kind of environment. It just you just like sink in, man. I guess it should have, man. That's out of the beat here, right? Right. Um, so let's get started on the distillery, the history. Uh, yeah. Some a lot of folks locally know of Avapara, mm-hmm. but talk to us a little bit about the distillery, how King and Ass. Who was involved? But, uh, but sure, you know, honestly, I'll kind of start at the end. You know, Tala Caro comes, it's, it's reached where the story started. You know, it means being in the Creek, Rig and Grapevine Creek, and the uh, Caddo Pair, uh, the Caddo language of the Grapevine area. Um, so that's where it started back in 2016, where the idea was born between Justin and Jason Jackson. Uh, I'm sure you've heard those same support, and Shannon mentioned them a few times. Um, Jason owns Axe Neal Castillery, while elders are there out in Colorado, like, uh, Justin cited you were tied it in silly. So Emma Jason dove in head first and started Tyler Carroll back in 2016, started laying barrels down in 2017. Uh, quickly realizes we need more space. So we're at two years at 3 a.m. Grapevine, we're set, oh, no, we need more space. Can't store we see in the same county or outside of the county make within. So we had to figure out a name on. Started looking around, we found the Alistair. Um, it's a lovely Google. He they found old Cougar's Bear House. Massive story, massive spots, a great back spot. So for Rick House uh, stuff as well. So um, we got we were in 2020, as we all know, with COVID, you know, kicked us in 2020. Uh, so it took us about three years to get where we're at now. Uh, we finally got our tasting to open. Got to open about five months ago. Uh, that is still is up and running sometime this year, but early this year, which really excited them well. Gotcha. So what is the spilling and 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 all the fermentation process look like right now? So right now we're at a stand. Uh, we've got everything set up, all of our ferment, our ferments there, our cookers there. Everything is ready to go. Our heat line, our, our steam lines, mm-hmm. um, our chill lines, all that's ready to go. We just have a couple of small plumbing problems through the actual stills. So I've got a steam line touching a cooling lag on firewall right now. Yeah. And it's also caused a dip in one of other lines. So got some plumbing coming out. we we'll actually open the next couple of weeks and book that. Once that sticks, we'll open on it. Justin's going to be ready to start to sell them with steam line. That's poor thing, but... For now, we're so what you guys are producing is uh, barrels that were already completed prior to the move. So right uh, in 2020, right before the move, they decided we're going to start laying down a whole bunch more barrels, really you know boost up our stock. So uh, all our stock right now is from about 2017, 2020, um, good chunk of 2019 from. Wow, not it's really good age. It's a, absolutely, absolutely. So talk to us a little bit about sourcing. You guys, are you sourcing from local grains or going outside the state? So when we originally started, uh, we we're kind of forcing wherever we could. And I mean, it's fine. Justin was trying out different grains to really figure out what toss they would be. Um, but I think by 2018 or early 2019, we started going getting Texas grain. So, yeah, uh, I mean, we started up in like North Dakota and then we got some to Kansas and now we're in Texas. So it's all Texas corn. Top lines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got Texas Red Bear, Texas Weed, we got Texas Rye and Go Wide, uh, Texas Elder, Rye Berry. Um, and then we've also, yeah, our, our malt, all test, all of the water. It's up in the Venice and Urban Morph and Evil area as well. Yeah, but yeah, all test. You got a unique yeast ramp up late moon, though. Very unique yeast strand. Oh, I should say that's very unique. Um, how long have they had that? I think Justin been using that strain since 2017. Well, I said, figured out his flavor. He really walked it in. I drank it back. Um, the, the, the still that you guys use in Palestine, it's it's the same, different than it. 
a new still. Actually. It's a new so. Okay. When we move, um, we decided we were going to go ahead production as well. So we bought four Arthur Harris Edels from the old uh, Urshan factory. So we got Oakdale, California, and a massive Urshan factory. They were using these four seals to make to make snow power. Mm-hmm. So they're uh, built in 1964, like quarter inch thin copper, super big, super dense. It's going to outlast our distillery. So we got two of them fixed up. We sent them on the bin dome. It all shut up. Man, it looks weird. Glad it's still nice. Replace all what gas. It's rid it for a whole bit. We saw two on their side. We then we have them all shut up. Real bit. Oh, that's awesome. But that's a that's a cool oh, yeah. thing that I don't think many people know about. Yeah, really excited for those. Now I can't wait to our first one off track. And look, this no sit and shot effect. We just did it. Um, we send our old seals from Grapevine. Those are actually now acts in the Oak East Village. Jason, uh, Justin's brother. So we're actually setting those, I think. Postman Martins. Gotcha, gotcha. You got us out of, uh, also on top of that, you have a mini yeast strand. You're setting up a, a new still that used to still keep bits. No, that's really cool. Um, you also have a lot of different styles of barrels. Sorry. So you guys do a lot of custom size barrels. Mm-hmm. Is there a strategy that goes along with, uh, I would assume that there may have been different cooperages that you guys were negotiating with and get 30s, does it's all you could get, uh, so for you, what have you? Yeah, um, a lot of that, a lot of our barrel sizes were that at first, and I'm just trying to get what we could get. Uh, so we've actually got three main barrel suppliers, you know, three barrel 50 degree, barrel mill, and like purple big Kelvin. Um, they just, everything got acting the pelling barrels. It's not like that. And it's not dark, slow, and it's like this. Um, but within those barrels, we have freer sizes. We've got the 53s, 30s, and 25 And Yeah. 25 hours, man. That's my art. Oh, I'm, you know, we just did a barrel thick with them recently. And every time I go to the 25 gallon, I just see it. Man, it's really cool. It's, it's hard to beat that side. I think that the, there's only a couple of different distilleries. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I haven't been in every distiller's back room. But I know that um, in 40, that Lone L has some small barrels because I've done a per, I've done a big pair, uh, Spy versus Spy, which was a Beast Tech Suburban Society hit. We was there, he did some rally barrels, the nearest is Claw Barrel with where, and then the Dearson Brothers has some small ones. I, I personally, had, I didn't pick it, but I got in the barrel, 30-gallon 30, uh, 30 barrel from them, and then in, the flavor that comes out on his barrels is just incredible. Some of them got the Texas heat with those barrels of quick aging, and it just it brings out cherry tobaccos. You know, RBA one that ball. I'm not sure if shock with the comes out in ours. It's just yeah, it's really awesome. So tell me a little bit about like your mad scientist, the spiller. Um, because I'm sure he's seen like Justin Vision, or is Justin getting in the mix or how does it work what's the dynamic between the distiller who's taking the measurements or maybe ever written master well justin's uh head of it all he's a distiller he's big old there's you know what glenn brand do at how we're into our barrels uh you know he kind of got started in his brother kind of ashing for it his brother out started and then uh you know kept the old bad accident a point well car accident Ooh. and it kind of changed the why i rethink of my lost stuff that's medium I mean, sorry, still. Um, yeah, so once he picked out his flavor, you know, I mean, he tried a bunch of different whiskeys. He went to Kentucky. We went, you know, much sugar in Texas Whisper distilleries at that time, a point, a few of them. We checked him out and really tried to figure out his flavor. And I, you know, decided to want to go with that four grain, like the saltness that the weed gave with my and how they complement each other, especially in the Texas heat. You know, I have some rather Asian here, so you got to figure out a way to counteract that. So yeah, once he got it, he stuck with it and just kept plugging away. We changed the recipe, something we've done along the way. And that's, again, just him learning as it goes. Sure. We learned a little bit on a lot. It's brother. A brother kind of started off the ground too. And, uh, Brad. So, uh, you know, one different thing we've done is we recently started with cook, you know, like everybody, most people do the cook up at boy rings and, and cooker. Then you push hot water in there, start cooking it up. Well, it throw your yeast uh, to where well, he decided he saw some cool people there, some stuff people doing it where they could get a cook down bed. Fill the hot steam water, tongs will go, then we are dark rains in there and let those cook down. But that, and it really, we actually see it change the flavor um, in our wisdom from that. So, damn, just warning as it goes, keeps, keep pushing away, learning things at weeks. Um, almost like a French coffee 
Ooh, yeah, where do you have the plunger? Is that what you know, you're, you're boarded down? Huh. Never thought about that. It's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it did. It, uh, James, it told me, you know, the barrel range is where that changes, and you can really see the sweep the difference. And you go from like end of 2018 to like early 2019 and stuff, and you would see that change. And it's just, it's really you beat. I don't think the stuff beforehand. No, yes, yeah, so it did it. I still you beat. So yeah, I've talked to a number of people that I'm, I'm, I don't like to use names in general, um, unless yeah, they I'm giving kudos. Sure. But in this case, they were given feedback, and they were they visited the story within the last year, and they had been super impressed with the progress. And maybe it's just your taste, your taste buds. You know, you you taste so many different things, especially Texas, but pretty bold mm-hmm. and 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 very distinctive and our flavoring. Uh, there's some there's some distillers that really want to stand out in their in the way they they do things, and they the feedback I've gotten is that. Every time they they visit, it gets better and better. Like the barrels that they taste, the product that they taste, is it just keeps getting better. So kudos, Justin. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not trying to get in that maybe I am, um, but uh, kudos to them for for getting better and better. All right, let's let's take a pause to see what you brought us. Um, we got a lot of bottle class here, and I've got a bright tub. So we've got a variety of uh, files here, and this looks like a a barrel that was done this year, right? Yeah, well, actually, I pulled that sample. Yeah, just to minimize some off the four year old bird, five year old almost bird, and off over five year old bird, which is, yes. you don't find a lot of text. This is cat string that, you know, sure, that age. Uh, this, this, one's, one's, this one's not open. No, we all don't read the cast that we did at the 128. It's actually one of my favorite cast strings we released recently. It's a three and a half year old barrel. So you tell me it does. Um, but yeah, I actually brought some different, you know, bronze malls. Yes, at my mall, which I'm a big fan of RI. I always have been. Well, this is like more grain straight bourbon, uh, 148 proof. Oh, oh, yeah, that Carol, I can have that Kelvin barrel as well. It's like the little 30 gallon or 25 gallon barrel. Yeah, yeah, definitely want to taste that. What's the R&B? So this is the red and blue quarry experimental Justin's done. Um, I actually have a full bottle of it from back in 2020 when I first visited the distillery. And then I have the same, I actually don't have a bottle. No, so that's a running mall. This yeah. is a red run. Yeah, I was. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I've actually got a barrel of it or all of it. Alice, it's three years younger than this. And then just taste the blood. Says, yeah, it's a red blue or experimental barrel. You know, it's at least you see some five percent corn, uh, yellow corn. But okay, so on this one, we actually just split that as we ran blue. So it's keep that way. Sweet. So, no malt, no malt in that. Oh, it's not malt. It's okay. So, it's like 48, 48, and maybe four. Right. Yeah, it's a wood. No, this is our standard mash still. Oh, okay. So it's going to be 65% uh, red and blue. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then 11 or 11 wheat, 13 so far. Got it. Got it. And what's this? So that one's really unique. And it's a little experimental. It's a lot of fun. We've got a local brewer in town. Okay. Yeah, one, of, one of our barrels was some beer. The Belgian plot. Is it? God, we just dumped one. Oh, I take that over your top. I'm like, go ahead. Yeah, so we gave up this barrel. Like we dumped it. We put it all in a holding tank, all our bourbon. And the barrel, the age, the uh, uh, beer, a few months, gave us back a barrel. We filled it the third and it's been sitting in there for, I think, close to a year now. Well, I'm going to go for that. And it is, because I think, I think I'm going to be able to taste the beer. I'll oh, think. Yeah. You know, um, I get a lot of civil berries between our different single barrels. You know, with that tall flavor, it's very thin one. This one just had such like, Tobacco rich dark finishes to it that I don't know if you all but there's if you are looking for a reputable builder with a proven track record and a client base to back it up, give Red Construction and Development LLC a call. Red Construction offers full design build services for new construction, custom homes, and remodeling with free site evaluations. They have an A plus rating with the BBB and are proud members of the Tyler Area Builders Association. Texas Association of Builders, National Association of Home Builders, and the Lindale Area Chamber of Commerce. Red Construction and Development LLC stands behind the exceptional quality of their work and have the expertise, the resources, and dedication to deliver the results you need on time and on budget. To learn more, give them a call at 903-630-8660 or visit them online at www.redconstructiondevelopment.com. What is it? What is a day in the life of uh, someone who works in a celery with life? Like, 
because you you post a lot of reels, right? And it looks like freaking fun. Like you're just every morning because I mean, one of your reels said, "Well, you know, is it is it breakfast or is it working or something like that?" Talk to me a little bit about what a day looks like in in working in the distillery. I've worked with other bars and stuff, and they've always been fun. When I got the opportunity to work out there. I jumped on it. Um, it's, it's every day I'm learning something, whether it's about the barrel or about the distillation process. Uh, and that's amazing. I love that part. But also, I get to dive in barrels. I get to go play around with them. Right. And then they kind of give me free range to these goofy videos. Right. Give me a little, you know, Facebook credit. Uh, but yeah, you know, I kind of get to go out there. I just stand the barrels a lot. I'm always trying something new. You know, in the bar, I'm always trying to match a flavor or recreate a flavor with uh, some more spirits. Just because as a distillery behind the bar, we can't use keeping it real. Who's so going to get fire or move? I can't buy. I'm almost certain this is right. So if I'm going to, I made our own move, I'd match a flavor for that as well. Yeah. So yeah, I'm always just trying something new, experimental, testing my palate, testing, you know, what I, which very little, but, you know, we try to, try to learn something today. Yeah. Yeah. Full disclosure to the, the, the employers at Tabapiro. Mm. I I did I didn't recruit you. I kind of will like giving you a lifeline. Good, I appreciate yeah, it. I did, did I? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I even made you to, uh well, I didn't make you a official job offer. I just said mm. I would help you out. But I I'm super, super excited for what you what you're able to do. You know, I I know you're in your, your lane, you know, and that shit. Super glad that they uh they extended uh, an offer that that made sense for you. And I know you've been super excited since you've been there. You're having a lot of fun, if you tell, in the videos. Um, seems like a super friendly uh, environment mm -hmm. to work in, it, where you get to, like you said, experiment. I don't like that. I mean, it's all kid in a can story. You know? right. I just want an adult out well, from candy. I and you know, it's just go out there and play. You know, I, uh, it's the new Watson Lint Barrels. I get to play with build stills, touch on the stills, and and it's, it's always something new and exciting there. No, it was wait. Would it be the boys? Big man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that is a real good. Yeah, the dark, deep flavors. Boom. I think I think that's like a beer drinker's like they're their segue with mm -hmm. would be this type of full oh, iron. Right. That's so good. About the steak and shit at iron. One degree, iron thirties. So, so on. Walk me, walk me through again. You said it before, but you, you take the barrel, you dump it, you give it to a, a brewery. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I know which brewery it is. Then they do uh, a double Belgian, a uh, Belgian trot, Belgian fly. Then they give it back to you, mm -hmm. and you put more to sell it in it. Yep. We ran after we see that was an import back in too. Oh dear Lord! And it is, you know, and that stuff Justin's doing. It's got several barrels like that out there, not just beer about barrels, but all kinds of stuff out there. Right. 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 Um, our special release barrel we did is by the April Bird, and spent the last two years with like in one of our riders. See, and, and that but nothing business specific was one hundred thirty gallon uh, Calvin's, and it was. Dark like that one, uh, right. just rich, just all kinds of deep flavor. Not, it's super, super unique. You get, it's like the whiskey like hits you, and beer hits you, and whiskey hits you again. And it's playful. It's yeah. very playful, and, and it doesn't super, it doesn't burn a lot. The finish, it's not super long, which isn't really meant to be that way. Sure, it's, it's got the beer involved, uh, but it's it's very flavorful. Yeah. But I'm more of a complex fan. Sure. So if course. you're if you're in it to just get the maker's flavor, then that's not gonna be your in your wheelhouse. But if you're into like these different nuances and stuff like that, that's that's super fantastic. Um so so here has been around for a while, they've done a lot of sickle barrels. I know I've been a part of one um that a minute ago. Well, what are some past things that you heard about that have been fantastic or things that you're like, can't hey, we should stop, start, repeat that stuff when it comes to single barrels and single barrel process? Or do you have anything in the present that you're working on or maybe even in the future that you can talk, tell us a little bit about 
when it comes to single barrels, selection, access, because as someone who seeks single barrels for club and for sometimes individuals, mm -hmm. it's just one of my ditches that I enjoy doing it. I really enjoy the feedback that people give, uh, especially when I'm part of the oh, yeah. sample crew, uh, because you're, you're making a big decision on sometimes small amount of volume. And uh, so talk to us a little bit about if I'm, if I'm a seeking a single, single barrel, um, what the process may have looked like before, if there's any differences, because maybe you don't know the difference. It's not a big deal. But what what do things look like in the present? Maybe what the things they look like in the future? Well, we are kicking up our single barrel operations. I'm actually not at three barrels going out this month alone. So really excited on that. We have longer us and all really good age on. Uh, you know, this last barrel pick I did, I'll probably edit my uh, my ways a little bit. But honestly, me and a few of my good buddies, uh, guys from the humidor, um, uh, we all went out. We honestly just climbed over barrels, man. We we went in the sample probably. He told that Jacobs. Where he comes up, Blake and oh, yes, yeah. Blake and Creeks. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, we went out there, climbed over barrels, he hunted through them, and oh, it is eight to ten barrels. I think I don't think we found a bad barrel, you know, it's one at the other. That's exactly what they told me that you know, there was a big diversity. And, and so, if I if, let's say I wanted to get so I come forward, they wanted to have a golf tournament, they mm -hmm. wanted to have a, a bourbon represented as part of like the team or maybe everybody who uh, was participating, what would that process look like if, if somebody wouldn't come forward? And Man, they uh, reach out to me um, at the distillery, reach out to us online. But yeah, if you reach out to me, I'm going to get you in there. We're going to go into the distillery. I'm going to show you. You get full forward. We're going to put some samples from barrels. I may, I started actually doing like presentations where I'll bring four or five my favorite barrels up. Let's look at these. There's nothing in there. We're well, like, sure, we'll go dive into the distillery after that. But typically, yeah, fine. For sure, barrels in there. But yeah, all we have to do really is reach out to me. We love to have people out. You know, we're just getting basically three filter. Right. I shut down for three years. So we're really excited to have people out. Get them out to taste fairly. Show them what Todd is out. You know, uh, we were releasing two of your products. I, I really enjoyed it. I was making a lot of cocktails with it. It was good for auto. But now the stuff's got a couple more age, a couple more years of age on it. It's really in my opinion, stand up. That's this. Awesome, man. So before we get into maybe some some of the the distillery only type stuff, mm -hmm. talk to me about what I could expect to see maybe on some shelves in Texas, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So if I go to a Texas liquor store mm -hmm. that's fairly well stocked. Sure. What, sh what kind of product should I see from Kyle Kelly? Typically, they're always going to have, or most Texas stores right now have our four grain, our higher proof four grain. It's a silver label system call it, just like that. It's our flagship. Uh, or it's fantastic. You asked me at 103. Um, also, our rye, our rye malt, um, it's 68% malted rye, 13% unmalted rye, 6% rye, or corn, 6% wheat, and then Three percent bars. So that's our ride. Right. That 100 by for each. Be honest, since I'm a huge fan of our ride. It's a lot more soft than wide and rides. Yeah, I'll chalk the forward. Uh, yeah. That's typically going to be on our shelves. And we also have a cast rank offering. Same label as this. It's actually, this exact one is in a pop shelf stores right now. Um, cast rings have come anywhere between 120, 130. For, we tried off a little bit. They say the higher 40s out in all the markets. That might hurt like people out a little bit. But yeah, typically, and you go to Specs, you go to uh, Goody Goody. You know, any of the big brands are going to carry. It's all the wine. We should single barrel pick for it. So awesome. Awesome. Do you know the project? I mean, so a lot of distillers are starting to get into Alarada, mm. starting to get into toasted batches, a lot of Cabernet finishes. Uh, you see a lot of different variations of maybe a poor product or a multi-layer product. So maybe you have a product like our iron group that is done in sherry. So they finish the product, they put in the sherry barrel for two, three months, and they put it in an sure. uh, barrel for a couple months. They projects on the right. I, you don't have to fully disclose, but I mean, you could kind of give us a hint. Well, we've got, you know, I mentioned our beer barrel. We've also got the red and blue corn. We've got a few uh, two more bourbon barrels finishing in rye barrel, right? Alice Rattle. 
I do know we just got four barrels in from a winery. What we're doing with those, I'm not sure. We've got four 53 gallon barrels just hanging in and dice the rack. Really? I'll just leave that one there. And, uh, uh, there's always something they've got going on or an idea of that sort, especially just, you know, it just, it, he always knows how to bend it where it needs to be a cement and blood fun ways. So I'm excited to see that. We do have a new product line we'll be releasing. Hopefully this year it's going to be a still brighter product line. Coming in a little bit cheaper price point. Okay. Yeah. Typically our burden is going to be around 50 to $60 on the shelf. We're trying to get this one in under $40 on the shelves. Wow. Uh, everyday man's uh, burden. Our spurs are on the spirits. We are our Okay. Yeah, we've got the name for the lounge as well, and still driver lounge. We're right next to a train track, so it's uh, we're all uh, tying that in. There's that have a new bottle, which is new design, really new as well. Is it going to be the canteen style or no? no. Is that new bottle, um, short, not short, that it's uh, comes up the neck, kind of rounds out with that long neck on it. It's a really cool bottle we got and sourced out and uh, just recently, and just kind of while figure out how I want to do this bottle. Correct. So they're finishing up designs on that now, getting my able to leave the TTB as well. So proof. Um, probably right in that 40s, 45. Uh, probably super, yeah, right around 90s. Nice. A okay. little above, a little above nine, somewhere about six. Is it going to be a two year product? Yes, sir. A bit, yeah, okay. Possibly a deleted product. Oh, so it's fall match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sweet. So, um, you guys have, like you said, just opened up. You've got a new still, if, or you, you've got two new stills, right? That are, that are done. You've got barrels there. A lot of barrels there. You've got a new bar, right? Asymmetrical. So that's been constructed for five months, you said? Yeah, we got to open uh, back in August. We had a massive grand opening. Palestinian community showed up, really supported us. Super excited. But, in our, you know, we got the bar opening. We always serve our products, and we got our four grain bourbon. We got our eye. We also got a vodka and a gin. Okay. Oh, okay. We will be making a lot of the gen for future reactions for the city. So I'm asking you, you know, the cow dollars with us. Yeah, let's stop it. Uh, it. So it's a nice stitch of Tyson. Tyson, those gins. And it and asked it. It's so good. And, and so does it becomes a near bottle, correct? Or yeah. you have to remodel it? Eddie gave me two big old blue vats, uh, 190 proof. One's gin, one's lot, or 60 gallons a piece. And I proof it down myself, follow myself, hold it. Why is this a lot one? I've never seen. 60 gallons of fire ice. So it's already done. Oh, yeah. And it just ships over down. Yeah. And I'll forget it down. And that, yeah, it's like with the 192 proof at 60 gallons at 60 gallons of water, ran out of water for Wow. And saying that it, it's, it's big, it's strong, you can smell. You open that fat and you get the junk or that. Just like, oh, oh yeah. It's you. And the gin's really funny because that citrus is a lot, very full in that citrus. Yeah, I've been doing a lot to really be huge. It's like a camomile gin, a green tea gin, pineapple gin. So there are two names. Mm -hmm. and so is it in, what kind of bottle is it in? It'll be actually our still dryer bottle. So I'm okay, it. got it, got it, got it. So I think you already have some bottle. For distilleries. Yeah, we're all waiting for that in some CCL. Yeah, yeah I've already got five gin, so the gin, distillery views. I make all have a contract with stuff. Yeah. That's awesome, man. All right. So I'm going to go to the RB. Says, oh, yeah. This is the one, the 148. We got to finish with that. Yeah. Yeah. That one gets a little spicy. Yeah. I actually uh, tried out a little bit dance while you're missing some of it now. I'm <laughs> really excited. Justin told me to go ahead and bring that up. Every time I see one of these bottles, especially with like, if you guys could see this, look at that writing. I mean, anytime you see that writing, I get super excited because you know that some chemist was, they have the worst handwriting, typically, just like doctors. And it's it's so good. I mean, of course, they had to write the proof oh, really yeah. big so that people would understand, like, we're getting in some just like, hot stuff. Look at that. You get the pinch, you support your gas tank, you'll be all right. Right, exactly. Um, any, I didn't say, um, but I did it anyway. Any expansion things that are happening? Are you guys adding like horseshoe pit or uh, maybe like a, a kids area? I know maybe with Kipper Kipper saw sure. they have like a kids zone and they have you know the vineyards that have the you know the, the birds out there, the whites and mm -hmm. this that and the other. I'm sure there's ideas being tossed around because it's a new year, oh, yeah. right? So any anything that you guys are, are doing well in Rio. Um, the fact that we got it open, you know, back in August, we're always trying to add, expand something, do something. 
sharing out live and you can go on our Friday night. Oh, sweet, my so Friday night. Yes. And to start, six to nine. Six to nine, actually, uh, this Friday is when this aired and last by uh, Chris Rice is out there playing. Oh, sweet. Another, another reference to Chris. Oh, no. Yeah, he's uh, I, he's so inspiring. So many times. This dude does uh, cocktails online, just like me, but uh, honestly, you really might go into it. Just really incredible palate. God knows what's doing this now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we do live views on Fridays. We do have like a little smoky patio right now where you have plans in the future to expand that. Put some lights out there, make it a little bit nicer. You know, uh, Palestine's actually offered us a train car to do some stuff with. So oh, I heard about that. Hicked around the end of a, of a cigar lounge, read the speakeasy, but we have our own fight to spur next to the rail, to the actual rail. Oh, course. you can sell right. We can throw cars on there if we want to. to be around to the distillery and actual rail line. So definitely have uh, got some things in mind. But yeah, cool without the museum there. I mean, I'll take people into kind of think of look at some maybe some early utensils, so yeah, stuff like that. Uh, my dad was in the railroad industry, yeah, for forty years, twenty plus years. And so um I one of my favorite memories was he was in a lot of different places, but in this memory, we were in New Orleans. And as many people know, there's a lot of water, bodies of water, channels. You don't drive a train, you run it. Sure. So you, you, know, you pull the throttle and, and run it in over now, by the bridges, which maybe I shouldn't have smoked. Maybe I shouldn't have served uh, and stuff like that. It was so much, it was so much fun. And so, yeah, pair the engine and push it forward, slip it down. And it's so cool. And my grandfather did a lot of work in Mooses. And so that, I would assume that maybe this trail park or this train car probably was because the engine adds so much motor and line of it. There's not a lot of space. It's really not in the line at all. Um, there's enough to run it. A couple of guys to sit around it and I and spit in the corner. In a that's what they had. Uh, keep it off more, sure, it's not being so slick. So, uh, man, it's, it, uh, it, I love the train deal down like with the out here, it's, uh, here at the back of, uh, just across the street to him. They, uh, he moves that kids can, could go through and all that, all that good stuff. Um, so life's maybe the booze, all that good stuff. If I come out the house, and I want to visit the story or in the bar, real bar manager. Uh, what should I expect? First off, you guys are going to be one of the stops on the trail, right? Yes, sir. Uh, in Texas. So I'm going to stop in there. It's not a congested area, is it? No, Allison's a smaller community. We only got about four names to find out people. So it's actually pretty easy to get it in and out of the house and all 155. Uh, you're coming from Tyler. Um, a little bit tougher to find, you know, as cities grow, roads get rearranged, train tracks cut old roads and make new ones. Um, we're actually fighting about Google Maps for public three months now, just trying to get my information space there. Um, but once you see it's pretty deep, I mean, a big sign up on this is the care road. Um, but yeah, once you walk in, it's, it's locked. It's really cool. I love to do mini tours. You know, we do tours where you schedule them online. You schedule it up, we're going to come in with a 45 minute tour, we're going to pull through the barrel, do the bull tasting. Give you some time and taste them before we open. Um, but if you just come in off the streets, we're not crazy because I'm going to show you where I'm going to take the end of the still or show you the still, still fun stuff. You know, uh, I, I just like to treat every guest like it's their first time there. Like I've never met them. I want to show them what made up, show them what happens. It's actually my favorite part, getting into it to the tours. You know, cocktail in hand, let's go see the stills. Yeah. Yeah. What's your what's your favorite cocktail to make? Or what, what, what do you think you get the best reaction from? And it, this is, it sounds a little cheesy, but I love the old fashioned. I'm a firm believer you can build a bar on the back of it with old fashioned. And there's so many different variations. Sure. You know, I start and give our base old fashioned rest to a beautiful, the simple, firefruit, gussie, bitters, um, and then, uh, a flamed orange and amaretto cherry. Super easy, but really accentuates all the flavors. You get all the good flavors on the top. It's just an easy cocktail drink, not too free. It also sort of burn and kick. But what would that you can make so many different variations? So I started doing some bit of and things like that. I made a shiitake maple mushroom simple syrup. 
all this, and we're so little just attacking maple mushrooms. So, wow. And I've done an old fashioned with that. And I'll even do like old fashioned eat that and like a fat washed bourbon. So I'll take a bourbon and I'll mix in bacon fat, like that stick, flat fat, and you have like fat rinse bourbon. I'll make old fashioned. It made a ton. Turns out I sold the car. Basically sold. Yeah, phenomenal. So uh, I'm, I love the old fashioned. Thank you so much. I love variations. So many different plates. Any, anything that surprised you when you toss it together where you, you were taking a whiskey and, and you were kind of like just trying to figure out the scientist part of you and, and you're putting it together. You're like, this doesn't make any sense, which some of that didn't, but, and, and it comes out, you're just like, wow. I mean, yeah, we actually, how thin of the hot chili ever fest every year. Okay. One thing that's commonly known is you're already and very yummy off the rails, right? Okay. Hot and bourbon don't really go well. Because yeah. They want to be bourbon spice. And yeah, so we had the hot chili pepper fest. I walk out of these, some spice and bourbon. So I took this working pepper and I induced them in calf string bourbon. Oh, great. I didn't pop the skin on scorpion peppers. I slipped and sit and melt in it for a couple of weeks. And I, I made it with one of my never caught to all spilled by daughter. It's got a little bit of rosemary, honey, some ginger, a little bit of lemon and curd. Well, I started with that half street scorpion pepper bourbon there. It is to die for it. The heat comes through my weight with at least fats. Um, uh, it was, I was just so surprised, you know, uh, I've been tasting, but I tried to pair my bird and pop to you, you know, what do you think about what is this? And uh, so just to see it there so well, man, I was, it's, I will wash over into that. Yeah. Do you know this have food out there? No, not yet. We got the, I was on, I thought that I didn't mention it. And I figured we're going to have a food truck out there eventually, right? So grand opening that food truck went really well. Yeah, we start picking up physical disorder food trucks and stuff out there. Yeah, we just kick around the idea of things and charge you rewards, stuff like that. Now that we're in the first year, we really start seeing they, you know, there's a lot of really great local rest stops being encouraged people to go to. I know, Pine Girls and Good Friends Bar, yes, uh, Old Magnolia down the road. They think on my, my heart, my heart, and the else. So, right. a lot of good rest stops we encourage the regular food men come in, we like that party, what's that spot? Right. Yeah, I mean, now you can get DoorDash and some of that. Is that, is that, Pretty prevalent in Lane mm-hmm. City. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I figure it is pretty, I, I don't live there, so I don't know, but is it pretty easy to order food from the story? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of girl guys do. Grand, there's, I kind of direct our guys to a specific restaurant across the street. Sometimes you're a little south of the rain place, a little talk up, but it's cost street. Does that do this and stuff? Yeah. I kind of direct a lot of around there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause once the story offers food, that it makes things different. I mean, especially if it's, in the same, you know, under the same role. And, you know, we started, uh, we got moved to 2020. We started, you know, air off. So now let's skeleton crew, let's get open, let's get working, good space operational. And so, uh, you know, adding boo, we, you know, we want to see some of the animal go, which is get our feet under us, let's get some stuff going, we'll do going that bad. Right. Uh, is there anything that our viewers, listeners should know about? Yeah, the distillery I'll see that that maybe could be a misperception or something that they they heard about that that you've heard that people are coming in going, Oh, I heard it was you know, a lot of what I hear really is people that tried our younger whiskey. You know, some of our year and a half two or really two year old whiskey we were up with now. Again, I mentioned earlier it's actually got the sorry way tall, it's making top bill food that stuff for the bar. I loved it. It was good whiskey, but it wasn't incredibly Sam out. Uh, now we've got a few more years on it. I kind of mentioned earlier, it's hard to find Texas to see with this less age, this much age on it. Right now, I think it just really stands out. It's still as Texas whiskey area. It's new at least when they're making their own, not being sourced. Um, I just, yeah, it, it, it's just the malls, the chocolates that come through, which is, like I said, it's, it's really hard to beat our whiskey. Well, it, but I don't disagree. Um, all right, man. It's my favorite part of the show. Um, that's so far. Right. I didn't need to work. You haven't been elaborating too much, which is cool. I can add a lot of offer to all. Sure. Which is great, by the way. It's good. Um, and, and you're to the point, man. It's so good. It's refreshing. Um, your passion about it, I can tell. Uh, you, you got a great employer, uh, you have a future in the industry, you know that. Um, so it's my favorite part of this, the, the, the episodes 
where you get to give your shout outs to people that positioned you to do this. You're a salesman by trade. There's no doubt about it. That's why you know, other trade. Uh, yeah, no, well, let's just look at you. I love it. All my favorite parts when I hear the train go by this story. There's, I don't know why I'm, I know it's shaving the bear. It was just simply so nice. I was in a location. Today, at the same thing. Ooh. Man, the RV is <clears throat> for someone who's serious about bourbon and that's been in bourbon for a while. It's not for the faint heart. It's not for someone who has just jumped into bourbon. It's for someone who can disintegrate the, the grains, can, can taste it, and just, I said, disintegrate. This differentiator, the grains between the red and the blue, and understand how that pour gets very cornful of pour. There's no doubt about it. But you can taste there's two different kinds. Sure, they're playing in the same pool. Yeah, but uh, it's 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 very good in a serious way. Sure, it's a very serious for mm -hmm. uh, it's not one that I would want to put in any blend. Look at now, sure. And once the, I mean, you could put it, in, but I wouldn't want to see it. Um, so. All right, I'm going to pour one more. I'm going to pour in this uh, 2047. And we'll already at 8-1. You just sit with it. Okay, okay. Repeat. I wish I had richer than you know, a thousand. No, dude. They did a no pour a white shirt. They just did some. My, my, my guess, if he wanted me to break this, uh, something's going to be really good about it. For a one. 48. I can notice this older. And uh, there's been plenty of bourbon whiskey that I have not been able to notice and share that number. Yeah, not flat. All right, man. It's my favorite part of the episode. We get to do shout outs. These are the people that possibly encouraged you, uh, gave you the shout out of the nudge, or open the door to what you're doing now or what you may get as a feature. I, I love it because sometimes these folks don't get appreciate you say they deserve or that they they understand mm -hmm. that they shouldn't have. Uh what are some folks that that you you think about when you think about that? You know, the first first that always comes to mind. We actually found on the podcast our chance for them. Yeah, uh, the amount of knowledge that woman has, uh, the, the palette, everything. She actually started my uh, my first Barbie class, and I was sort of bar managing. I wanted to learn more about the spirit. I wanted to build a, what you know the cheapest spirits like fluid into a cocktail, still make it small cocktail. And I can you know, be able to learn. She offered me to do a my first Barbie class. We stayed in the my uh, Barbie tour class. Yeah. After that, I took the no, tour class. Was wide eyed the whole time, ears open, listening, super excited. And it just dove me. I started, you know, really heard an on take after that. And I ended up doing my executive bird and steward class out in Tucky at the house of and gosh, she just instilled so much knowledge. Even every time I see her, she just is a little snit that she's getting you but maybe like a handful of sit, but she you've never heard court and never do it's in the mountain. She does it so like non shallot yeah, yeah. you should almost know it. it's like, well, you know, you should do this. I'm like, or you shouldn't look, you know, this is from here. And I'm like, what a bit? I've never heard that. And then you're like, I don't want that dumb. <laughs> you know, I've done tastings with the right research to waste and split tasting. But I thought I had, and she comes in and is like, well, just show this and this and this about this. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I didn't want to be not up and even after. So she's just, she's always been a big inspiration for me. I love having her out. Even watching her do the tasting shirts, sure, she's just smart. smart. I've been on quite a few tastings with her mm -hmm. and she's got a, I don't know if you're, have you ever done a barrel pin? Not a barrel. Okay. So if you do, I'm not going to disclose all of her unique things because she, she may be a bit of spot. So <laughs> maybe she probably would. I don't know. Maybe. But uh, she has a very unique way of doing barrel pin mm -hmm. that I've never seen done by anyone else. And the thing about her is that every, sip that she takes you can tell that there's a very 
uh, detail of process that she's going through to understand what she takes. To. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a complex that thing. Then some people would say, well, you know, maybe too complex, but it's not. It's she's she's dissecting everything that's in there. She's pulled out notes of whiskey that I didn't know were in, but still right for her. After she pulled them out, the thinking about it and try to write, oh my gosh, the nano runs. You yeah. know, and it, it's just incredible. She thinks. Yeah. That, um, and another big one that's wiped out my second person, really, Chris Rice. I know I've mentioned him before. Sure. Um, but then really the last six months of the year, me and him from all I work together at the Humidor, we do uh, a quiz. Of, you know, the guy had a tomorrow palette. So I take, you know, two or three different earnings. You know, you along is there, not pouring one. Tell him a guess. Kentucky or Texas, tell me a guess. Peru, Nashville, a whole bit. Awesome. Yeah. The guy would always, on proof, he would be, you know, then two or three proof. Sure, sure, Sean. I could tell you where it was Texas or Kentucky. Yeah. And and that was just incredible to me. And I started watching Makes Cocktails. His cocktail videos in his life have a uh, Instagram called Cats Cocktails. He's, they're all about lists to have on. Uh, I think it'd be awesome to have both of them on. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it'd be just awesome conversation with them, be a performer, and also making drinks and his life making drinks. It's right up around. He knows cigars. He knows bourbon. You know, I have him as a musician out there at the, at the lounge all the time. He's just, I can't see him up about that guy. He's one of our favorite people in the world. Just, Definitely. Man, really inspiring. Seven students. Shit. Big fan. You know what You know what else? Man. Oh, man. I'm the big So I want to get this started. I well, you know, I'm always thankful to, uh, it's funny, I say it's Rick Elzai. Uh, you know, that Rick's on square. That's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I actually got my, I've already been marching in Texas Roadhouse for a little bit here and there, but went in there looking for a job. You know, at a bar team? I said, sure. I had no idea. Because <laughs> now I just, uh, they know there's a guy named Miss Murray, guy named Travis. Uh, they kind of came in and took me under the wing. Granted, they were rough. They beat me up a little bit. They taught me all the ins and outs of the opera bar team. I, I would not be here today without any of those guys. We're called Todd. Yeah, you know, I would, back I worked for him, you know, I would sit there. Do our Rick isms behind his back? Every time it's like, oh, you dare a trip, you know, and make fun of it. Man, I look back. The stuff he taught me, the stuff those guys taught me, it's always, you know, it's just stuck with me. And, you know, it's what got me the job I'm at now. It's really great. Oh, those guys. Very awesome. Man, it's so great to have y'all. Oh, you enjoyed it. Man, I loved coming. Oh, I was so excited. You told me you're doing a podcast. Super nervous. You got it at first, but, you know, why saw your podcast? Oh, good air. You were easy to go out. I don't know. So you all listen to the majority of this. Yeah, yeah <laughs> way easy. Um, man, it was it was awesome to have you on. Uh, one of my first experiences with East Texas, just bourbon in general, was with our bar. Um, it was with the uh, Chief Cato. We owned it um, at the Virginia Society. Did uh, it's it's a main staple in our area. I really enjoy the the whiskey, but I, I more enjoy the people, uh, the, the people behind the the juice. It, it, it matters, and I think it's uh it's great to have you on, tell the story, help people understand, especially the ones that are listening, and watching, and are sharing. Mm. So that way, folks can travel to Palestine. Oh yeah, that's always that's what we want them to do. And it sounds like you're doing some freaking crazy. Awesome drinks. Oh, down there. Yeah. Always yeah. find something new. Absolutely. So thank you all so much for viewing this episode of 12. We had a great time and looking forward to episode 13. We've got a awesome, awesome episode of 13. We're going to have some folks on talking about a hundred men that give a damn, which is, I know, a little braces, but. It's a great cause. Looking forward to uh, you guys tuning in. Thanks so much.